That's stealing. That's stealing. They're taking food out of the mouths of, of people. We were able to dismantle a fraud that stretched truly across the world. Uh, that doesn't happen every day. It was organized crime is what it was. Zuni Pueblo's Todd Westica is working on his latest masterpiece. Todd's award-winning stone carvings are sought by art collectors worldwide. But there's a dark cloud hanging over Todd. And in Santa Fe, Navajo artist Liz Wallace is handcrafting her latest creation. Liz's unique designs have earned her an international reputation, but her livelihood is at risk. I feel defeated. I just, my, my soul is just, oh, like, it, it's so overwhelming. We're talking about Native American art, everything from Navajo turquoise and silver to Zuni inlay. It's a huge tourist draw and one of our most important industries. But today, con artists are flooding the Indian jewelry marketplace with cleverly disguised counterfeits, bilking consumers out of millions of dollars. Bronwyn Fox is a Santa Fe gallery owner. Do you find that the average consumer out there is going to know the difference between a fake and the real deal? Unfortunately not. You're talking about stealing people's livelihoods. You're talking about deceiving a vast swath of uh, the American public. It's outright theft. Mark Body is a second generation art dealer in Santa Fe. If I stroll the plaza and go in a couple of stores uh, up and down the plaza, I'm not going to see any fakes here in Santa Fe. You will see more fakes than you'll see genuine. Counterfeiting Native American art is a federal crime. After fake jewelry showed up here in Albuquerque and in Santa Fe, the feds launched a major undercover investigation dubbed Operation Al Zuni. It was a very big deal. John Anderson is a former U.S. attorney. This uh, crime spanned all the way from the Philippines um, across the western United States. The mastermind behind this scheme? Albuquerque businessman Jawad Kalaf. Together with co-conspirators, they orchestrated a criminal enterprise involving tens of millions of dollars worth of phony Native American art. Ground zero for the con game? The Philippines. Hidden behind massive gates on a nondescript street in Cebu City was the Nerve Center, a Filipino sweatshop called Fashion Accessories for You. That primary business, maybe its exclusive business, was to make counterfeit Native American style jewelry to be imported to the United States. Sean Sullivan is an assistant U.S. attorney. They were obtaining genuine Native American jewelry and artwork and copying it, creating molds so that they could duplicate artwork on the cheap overseas in factories in the Philippines with the design of passing it off to American consumers as real art works of art. The fakes were pretty good. The counterfeiters knew what they were doing. They did. The Filipino factory churned out hundreds of thousands of Native American knockoffs. For example, Edison Yazi is a well-known Navajo craftsman based in Gallup. His art was counterfeited here in the Philippines. This inlay pendant was created by Navajo jeweler Calvin Begay, and this is a Filipino fake. The imitations were shipped to this Albuquerque business owned by Jawad Kalaf called Sterling Islands. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of pieces of, of jewelry, bracelets, earrings, necklaces of that sort. What they had on them were stickers that said, made in the Philippines. But those could be easily removed by an unscrupulous jewelry store owner who wants to deceive a customer. Over the course of the investigation, Sterling Islands received truckloads of counterfeit jewelry with a wholesale value of almost $12 million. From Albuquerque, the knockoffs were sent to a Gallup business owned by Jawad's brother, Nash Kalaf. He is the owner of Al Zuni Global Jewelry, the wholesale business that received thousands of pieces of counterfeit Native American style jewelry and other arts and crafts and sold it at the wholesale level. From Gallup, the fakes were distributed to retail outlets 
all over the West. Dozens of examples of jewelry stores in New Mexico where undercover agents posing as jewelry customers went in there and someone lied to them and told them that this was Native American when it wasn't. It was traceable back to a factory in the Philippines. Undercover agents caught jewelry peddler Mohammed Manasra at Albuquerque's flea market, hawking the Filipino fakes as authentic Native American art. What is that, Navajo? Is that what that is? Zuni? And when undercover agents visited Gallery 8 in Old Town, the sales clerk said the fakes were authentic Native American art. Gallery owner Niall Ali later admitted in court documents he instructed his staff to lie about the Sterling Island imitations. Operation Al Zuni spanned nine years. Federal agents seized 350,000 pieces of counterfeit jewelry valued at more than $35 million. This was the biggest fraud scheme involving Native American jewelry and arts and crafts, maybe in the entire United States. Mohammed Manasra was convicted for his role in the scheme. He was sentenced to a year's probation and forfeited more than 5,000 pieces of counterfeit jewelry. Niall Alley, who owned galleries in Albuquerque and Scottsdale, pled guilty to violations of the Federal Indian Arts and Crafts Act. He was sentenced to six months in a federal penitentiary. Jawad and Nash Kalaf pleaded guilty to a federal crime and were sentenced to two years probation. They forfeited $290,000 in cash as well as the counterfeit jewelry. The brothers were ordered to each pay a $300,000 fine. The Sterling Island scheme has been shut down. But don't think the problem of fake Native American art has gone away. As long as there are big profits to be made, the crooks will always be there. Yeah, I think it's a bigger problem now than it was 50 years ago. It makes me very, very sad, um, discouraged for the, for the artists. It makes me angry. I know these people and this is their livelihood and these fakes are directly impacting them. The federal government is going to be very, very aggressive in rooting out counterfeits from the market, protecting Native American cultural patrimony and cultural heritage. If you're a business who wants to cheat people, we're going to find you and we're going to shut you down. Larry Barker, KRQE News 13.